Matt Thompson with you here on AFL.com.au and we have breaking news. The two big bosses here at the AFL are with us in terms of the commission and in terms of football. We have the Chief Executive of the League, Andrew Dimitriou, and Adrian Anzis and the Football Operations Manager with us. Both of you, welcome. Well, Andrew, the commission has met. You're obviously in the room. What can you announce in terms of recommendations from the laws of the game committee and what's the commission ultimately decided? Thanks, Matt. Um, yesterday the commission met and considered proposed changes from the Laws of the Game Committee. And the Commission approved the following three recommendations. The first one is that any forceful contact below the knees will now be awarded a free kick. Um, and that forceful contact below the knees of an opponent that will not apply, obviously, to smothers uh, with the hands or the arms. The second uh, rule that was approved was that the, th the ball will now be thrown up all around the ground. The bounce will be continued to be used at the start of each quarter and after goals, but umpires will now throw the ball up for all field stoppages during the game. And the third rule that was approved was uh, the rule relating to ruckman at stoppages. So the separation of ruckman at stoppages with no contact permitted until the ball has left the umpire's hand to allow for a greater likelihood of the ball being cleared. Um, in addition to those three recommendations that were approved, the Commission approved in principle a recommendation to impose a cap on interchange rotations, but did determine that it wanted to see another season under the current arrangements before implementation. And this will include a trial in, in the, of the interchange cap in the NAB Cup next year, and we'll use next year to monitor uh, the progress once we receive more information. Um, there are the rule changes. Um, well, I guess the big story out of that that you've just told us is that there is no interchange change for 2013. It's going to come in for 2014. What was the recommendation that was actually put from the Laws of the Game Committee to the Commission? Look, the Laws of the Game Committee uh, did a you know, really wonderful job in, in, in the collation of all the information, in all the research and all the analysis. They consulted widely. I mean, I've never been involved in, and looked at such consultation, uh, the process they went through, ranging from obviously the players, the coaches, um, uh, sports scientists and I could go on and on um, and in principle the Commission supported the recommendation of a cap where the, the Commission does understand that there are issues around player welfare, does understand there are issues uh, around congestion um, but did want to uh, again trial at the NAB Cup in 2013, get more data and also get more data throughout 2013 to see the impact of the 3-1 um, which has only been in place for a couple of years. Is this a, a big move by the Commission to override the laws of the Game Committee, at least for, for next season, in, in making this call? Because obviously it's a, it's a very esteemed panel. Why has the Commission decided to go differently? Uh, look, it's not the first time it's happened. The Commission uh, in my time also um, um, did not approve the, uh, the removal of the bounce when it was put up by the laws of the Game Committee, which I chaired, by the way, uh, when I was General Manager of Football Operations. But it hasn't knocked back this recommendation. What it's done is it's accepted in principle the recommendation of the cap and it will use 2013 with the assistance obviously of the Laws of the Game Committee with more information to determine uh, what cap that will be at the end of 2013. What's your take on this Adrian and uh, what's the take of the, the Laws of the Game Committee I guess on, on the process that the Commission's decided to adopt? Oh, look, I think it's a fantastic process. I mean, everyone knows the Commission's the ultimate decision maker on the laws and I think the track record of laws changes over the years has uh, been instrumental in seeing the great game we've got today. Mechanically, how's it going to work then in terms of the, the trial for next season and is there no decision on exactly how the cap will work because we have to see what the data is next season? Uh, you're talking about for the NAB Cup? Or yeah, for the, the NAB Cup in the first season? instance and then... Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll circulate further details, but, you know, the, the idea is along the lines of a cap of 20 in interchanges per quarter uh, plus breaks um, and we'll circulate further details of what's, uh, what's been looked to be trialled in accordance with the Commission's recommendation. Andrew, just on, on this topic before we talk about the other changes, uh, a big call, there's obviously been some press reports about the speculation surrounding the, the interchange uh, set up for next year and obviously we've learnt today what the Commission has actually decided. But based on the speculation this morning, Eddie Maguire, the Collingwood President, said that an interchange cap could force players to take EPO. It's, uh, what, what's your take on, on, on that kind of dramatic comment? Well, look, you know I love Eddie Dilley. If I, did, if I didn't know Eddie as well, I would have thought that he'd been on something with those sorts of comments. So uh, I'm not quite sure what he meant by that. It doesn't make any sense to me. He might have watched Four Corners last night and 
been in the sort of frame of mind of the sort of Lance, Lance Armstrong situation. But the, we've got no reason to believe that our game is heading down that path. I mean, I've got to congratulate Adrian and his team. We've worked pretty closely with ASADA. We're the first sport to introduce the EPO testing in this country. Uh, we've been at the forefront and we've been at the cutting edge of making sure we're you know, ahead of the game when it comes to performance enhancing drugs. And I'm not quite sure why any comment this morning relating to the proposed rule changes, rotations or whatever has anything to do with uh, anything relating to drug performance enhancing drugs. I, I guess in a broader sense we're talking about player endurance. I don't know if any of you want to talk about that. I mean, what's the ultimate yeah, aim I've out, got out, out of this? On that, Matt. I mean, um, at no time does the fact of fatigue in any way or the interchange or anything excuse cheating uh, in our sport. And it didn't excuse it eight years ago when interchanges were about 20 per game and it won't excuse it this year or next year and we won't show any um, compunction in applying the full force of the anti-doping code if any player takes EPO or human growth hormone and we do test for them. All right, we'll wait for more details on exactly how the uh, trial is going to take place next year. Let's just quickly uh, tick off the other uh, issues. Sliding technique, first of all, uh, has been a big talking point. Or you, you, there's been some changes made here. How's that going to work exactly? Adam? So, uh, look, Matt, I think everyone was pretty happy with the way sliding knees or feet first was implemented. Uh, it resulted in a, a real reduction in that dangerous practice. What we're saying now is any forceful contact below the knees will result in a free kick being paid under the existing rules. The other change, of course, we're talking about the, uh, the ruck contests. Yeah. So we trialled, obviously, in the NAB Cup, separation of ruckmen, saw better clearance rates, um, probably a less scrappy ruck contest. Feedback on the whole has been quite positive. So we're going to look at that in the NAB Cup again with the intention of uh, implementing that in the 2013 Premiership season. And how do you expect the traditionalists to react when it comes to throwing the ball up around the ground? It's not unprecedented, this move. It does seem like it's the natural progression. Well, the other benefit of it, Matt, is the umpire will have his eyes up uh, at the stoppages to help detect infringement. So, you know, the majority of bounces are centre bounces. You know, there's only on an average about 24 around the ground. So, you know, that great tradition of the game is maintained. Well, thank you both for joining us. Let the discussion begin. It'll be interesting to see now how the, uh, the footy community reacts in terms of uh, the fans, the clubs and the like. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thanks, man. Andrew Dimitriou and Adrian Anderson with us covering off this breaking news here at afl.com.au.